What I'd like to talk to you about is something very close to my heart, Pythagoras. It's all Greek to me. If you're a builder, you're probably using Pythagoras on a regular basis, even though you might not even know it. And of course, these days you don't need Pythagoras theorem because you've got calculators, you've got apps, you've got all kinds of ways to avoid you having to do the heavy lifting. But just for those who have an academic interest and for those that love to use them, noggin once in a while. And Dan Cox is one of those people who finds this kind of thing fun. So he would rather work it out longhand than uh, go for a calculator. So what Pythagoras said in his theorem, he said that the square of the hypotenuse, which is this angle here opposite the 90 degrees, is equal to the sum of the square of the two opposite sides. Well, when I was a kid at school and they told me that, it just went straight over my head. I had no idea what it meant and I never had any idea that I'd ever find it useful in life. Of course, till I became a builder. What it actually means is, let's take this because let's take a very simple thing, which is a three, four, five triangle. You know, just because we know this on a right angle triangle, if this side is three, if that side's four, then that side will always be five. And we use that all the time to find our 90 degrees. So the square of this side would be a square, that's three times three, which is nine. The square of that side would be nine. The square of that side, four times four. So I make a square out of four would be 16. So what we're saying is 9 plus 16, which is a sum of those two squares. 9 plus 16 is 25. So we take the 25, we put that there. So we know that the sum of these two, the squares of these two, is equal to the square of that one there. And 25, of course, when you look at the square root of 25, 5 times 5 is 25. So we know that that's 5. So it proves the theorem works. Pythagoras, he had a lot of followers. He had a lot of students because he came up with this wonderful theorem. Or so they say he came up with this wonderful theorem because actually they now say that it was around long before Pythagoras and all he did is hear about this from somebody passing through on his Greek island and he thought that's good I'm having that and because of the fact they didn't have social media or anything like that he got away with it. This guy milked this idea of Pythagoras theorem to such an extent that he became more famous than the Beatles. You know blah, 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 blah. is that going to be around in 2000 years time? I very much doubt it. Four marks Pythagoras for nicking an idea allegedly and milking it to such an extent that what he did is he built up a vast following of people, an entourage of hangers-on. He formed a secret society. He swore all his, his followers to secrecy and they sat around and they talked about philosophy and they talked about mathematics, sat on a harbour wall there and had a high old life. And the only reason that they were able to have a high life is because they had slaves. Yes, not only the Romans, but the Greeks also had slaves to do all their fetching and carrying for them so they could sit around thinking about stuff. So there's another reason to not like Pythagoras. One, we think he nicked a theorem. Two, we think he was involved in slavery, but it gets even worse than that because the next thing we find out about Pythagoras is that he had one particularly bright student who went, hang on, Mr. Pythagoras, I don't think your theorem stands up. He said, because what if you can't square a number? What if this side is actually one? What's the square root of one? And Pythagoras thought, hmm. That's tricky. He said, so it won't work. If you've got numbers which can't be squared, how are you going to prove, how are you going to find out what the square of the hypotenuse is if you can't even square the other sides up? And Pythagoras, like this kid went on and on and on. He got right on Pythagoras' nerves. They were out on a boat trip one day around the Greek island. Probably had a bit too much to drink, was he? You know, the wine was free flowing. That's another thing that Pythagoras invented, by the way. A cup so that you couldn't drink wine too fast, gave it to all his students, so that if they tried to drink it too fast, it just spilled straight down the front. Very, very clever. He probably nicked that idea as well. He's out on this boat with these people and this student, and this student's going on and on and on about this. Pythagoras, your theorem does doesn't work. Pythagoras got fed up with him and allegedly tipped him overboard, sent him for a swim without a life jacket. So we've got three reasons to not like Pythagoras now. He nicked an idea, he was involved in slavery, and he was also involved in murder. But anyway, he got away with it, swore everyone to secrecy. In the end, things got a little bit hot for him on that Greek island, and he had to go to Italy. He formed a school in Italy, and eventually ended up getting murdered himself. So there is a bit of natural justice work in there. What I'm asking you, viewers, is you be the judge in this age of democracy, which just about 
survives. I would like to know whether you think it's a good idea 